everyone, and welcome to episode 26 of the Social Liability Podcast. Oh, this is a podcast where two middle-aged men sit around and complain about the people that violate the social contract we all agree to live by. And we have some stories for you this week, folks. We really do. But first, let's 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 start out with Buck. Uh, how was your Thanksgiving there, dude? I had a great Thanksgiving, man. My buddy, his uh, wife and son came up, and uh, my lovely wife worked from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4 p.m., making a wonderful Thanksgiving spread. And I got to tell you, man, I'm happy to be doing today's episode, man. It's our six months, man. This is six months. Is it 26 really? weeks. Yeah. 26 weeks, brother. I guess 26 so. weeks. I guess Six so. months. You know, yeah, I, man. I've had other shows that have made it over a year before they uh, they fizzled out, so I'm not going to get too excited just yet, but we're actually doing better than those shows did, so I, I think we're still going strong. And it, it's a fun... It, it, the show has changed quite a bit in six months. We went from literally us picking a topic and then complaining about it for an hour to the, the, the format that we have now where you know we find other people doing stupid things and complain about them. <laughs> I mean, it really, it really works out. I mean, you know, we can be douchebags vicariously through the douchebaggery of others. Yeah. And that way, you know, we still save face. A little bit. <laughs> so we're going to start this episode off with a bang, or perhaps a flush, with a school board member resigns after Zoom meeting bathroom mishap. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Francis, I can't pronounce her last name, Cog- Coglegia? I don't know, Resor- resigned as a trustee from the Hackensack Board of Education over the embarrassing video fail Monday uh, when she brought her laptop into the bathroom to relieve herself. <laughs> I mean, crap. I'm not going to say, oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I take my phone in the bathroom quite a bit. Uh, I have some. I find articles for this show while sitting on the toilet. So, I mean, but I oftentimes don't have my camera turned on, which apparently um, was not something she can claim because <laughs> apparently she was unaware she left the camera on, and her trip to the toilet was witnessed by nearly 140 attendees of the virtual meeting, including students. The board's vice president, James Scott Vickery, addressed the not-safe-for-work spectacle later on. As far as I'm concerned, while our teachers are being professional and you're at home sitting on the toilet, we are moving on with this district uh, doing what's best. (laughs) Her resignation was announced by the board at uh, Tuesday afternoon's meeting. They have until January 29th to fill her board seat. Uh, When reached by phone, she declined to discuss her resignation with the Post, citing... I will have no statement. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, we, we are in new times, and we are seeing people, you know, have to utilize video conferencing quite a bit. I do it every day now. Uh, we have a task force meeting every morning at 9 a.m. But I oftentimes turn my camera on, make sure everything behind me looks good before I turn it on, like, for the group. And uh, I, I don't do it mobile. But I did actually have a faux pas earlier this week. Would you care to hear about it, Buck? I, I, I can't wait, man. I'm on the edge of my seat, brother. It's not that exciting. Let's, let's hear it. It's not that exciting. Doesn't matter, man. But so I have a, a very large uh, holder in my car to hold my phone on there for like GPS and everything else. And um, I, I got a phone call first thing in the morning that one of my crews, as I work for a city, had hit an electric line. Uh, an underground utility line. So I was out there dealing with that, and I realized, oh, crap, the 9 a.m. task force meeting is starting soon. <laughs> so I told them, you know, we're not doing anything until um, the utility gets here anyway, so I'm going to go sit in the car and do this meeting on, on my phone. Now, it's a video conference, so I am using my phone with, like, Microsoft Teams, and I have the phone propped up, and I'm sitting there in the car talking to them, you know, and I get through my spiel because I'm usually one of the first ones. And as we're sitting there, I look up, as the new locate guy is there, you know, marking stuff on the ground so we can keep digging. When my operator for the backhoe decides he's going to start moving the backhoe while the guy is standing underneath the boom. So I start screaming, don't you fucking dare! And I'm laying on the horn. I'm, you know, doing the cut across my throat, screaming at this guy. <laughs> and all I hear is our public information officer say, Raz. Um, you're totally not muted right now. (laughs) 
And I look down just in time to see the shocked look of the city managers as they're <laughs> looking on at me swearing and and throwing a holy fit at this guy. But and granted, it was in it was I was trying to make sure this guy didn't get dead, but I did get some looks. But it wasn't nearly as bad as somebody watching me take a crap. You know what? I won't argue that. That is definitely not nearly as much of a uh, you know a shithead thing to do, but. Um, I will say this, man. If I were if I were in the meeting with your happenstance, I'd be sitting back going, "Yeah, yeah." I, you know what? That is the appropriate level of freak out that I would expect from somebody if I were standing there myself. I'm I'm satisfied. Well, I got back to city like, hall, and I, I some people were like, "Hey, you gonna yell at me? <laughs> like, are you gonna do something incredibly stupid to risk someone's life?" Wait, what? <laughs> and then I explained it, and I haven't heard a peep out of anybody since then. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like that's exactly how I would want something. Like I'm super, like I hate to say it, but I wouldn't care if the guy had to eat a bullet to stop that thing. I mean, like him or me. <laughs> well, take he, him down, he, Raz. See, see here's he the thing. Down. I, 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 I had a freak out on camera. I explained it, and it was done. Um, but the funny point is, is that it was just here at the PIO. Hey, Raz, you're totally not muted right now. <laughs> but here's the question of the day. As this woman is sitting on the toilet, having her conference, still talking, <laughs> how do you address that during the meeting? Or do you just ignore it completely and just keep laughing while it's happening? Do you, do you try to find a subtle way to tell her, um, we, we can see your, uh, we can see your bathroom. <laughs> I've tried doing it in like the, voice chat section at the zoom room i'd be i'd be like you know ex examine your camera <laughs> you know like uh xyc <laughs> like you know this is uh i'm sure there's a subreddit for this but this is not the correct venue to be displaying this kind of uh you know come on come on come on it's, <laughs> it's, it's like are we are, are you trying to like create a simile for or a metaphor for defamation by defecation i mean like i like is there a point to this yeah well moving on from shit to well other shit uh sex pistol star johnny rotten was bitten by a flea after rescuing squirrels how can i not read this story i mean seriously with a with a title like that uh and here's well, the, and I've, re I, I've really loved listening to the Sex Pistols. And, like, I still have a couple of their tunes on my playlist. And ironically, well, not ironically, but what, a funny little fact is that on that, I can't remember what the album or even what the song is, but Sid Vicious was singing, and he was so drunk at the studio that he actually forgot the lyrics <laughs> to the song. <laughs> it was just like, it was just like drunk yelling into the radio. Or into the microphone, I mean. And they kept it like, on the oh, album? Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they they kept the track like that. They're like, yeah, that's so punk. I'm like, yeah, that's... That's... It's that's just, a whole new level of, like, okay. It's just kind but, of I mean, sad, really. Well, I mean, you know, and, and I'm okay with it because slam poetry is a thing. Like, if people are going to be doing slam poetry and interpretive frickin' dance... Like, why can't a guy start drunk shouting at a freaking microphone and make millions of dollars? I mean, like, I mean, uh, you know, and that was that was back in the day, man. Like, that was innovative. Like today, it was something. People would be today. People would just talk about it on the view or some dumb shit like that. Well, you got like, Yoko you Ono literally screaming into a whole entire album. <laughs> or, or yeah, exactly. Or like they try to turn it into some like PSA for like substance abuse. And all it was was the guy just was on a bender, you know, and was all hyped up on drugs and booze and went into the... At least he showed up for work. <laughs> I mean, well, it, you it, know, it, 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 a guitar isn't heavy machinery. It's just fine machinery. Well, if, if the title <laughs> of Sex Pistol star Johnny Rotten bitten by a flea after rescuing squirrels isn't good enough for you to get your attention, the first sentence truly is. Johnny Rotten, real name John Lloyd, or Lydon, Lydon? Yeah. Johnny Rotten, real name John Lydon, was bitten by a flea on his penis. Yes, sir. <laughs> it was indeed on his penis. The Sex Pistols rocker had been attacked by the small parasitic bugs, 
which have left itchy bites all over his body, including his nether regions. He said, I looked down this morning at my willy, and there's a fucking flea bite on it. <laughs> and there's another one inside of my leg. <laughs> oh, God. John, 64, endured the flea bites after, his, after he befriended a bunch of squirrels at his Venice Beach home in Los Angeles. He said... <laughs> He said he's taken to smothering himself in Vaseline to ease the discomfort because he doesn't want to, quote, blame the poor squirrels. <laughs> he added the bites. Wow, last night was murder because of it. The itching, too. It's such a poxy thing to get caught, on, caught, caught out on. The only way around it, because I'm not going to blame the poor little squirrels, is to Vaseline my legs. I just hope they don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> wow. That's why there's still directions on shampoo bottle grass. Like, come on, man. <laughs> I want to know what he's doing with squirrels. He's got fleas on his dick. He's nuts. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No. <laughs> Maybe it's feeling a little squirrely. Oh. <laughs> All right. I don't, I've hit the button now three times. <laughs> do you want to get the rest out of your system so I can do it and just cu encompass it all in one push? Or do you, or do you think you're good for now? <laughs> I think I'll just squirrel away the rest of my remarks. <laughs> You're incorrigible. Well, I, what? Now you're going to say something else? I can see it. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. All right. Well, <laughs> so we're done in Venice Beach, and we have to go to our favorite place there, Buck. Where is that? Florida. Florida man, Florida man. Does whatever the fuck he can Makes headlines every time Florida's paradise Look out! Here comes Florida man And Florida is paradise because a Florida man was arrested for throwing a cookie at his girlfriend <laughs> This is just something small from a police blog that is extremely funny But a man who lives in Florida was taken to jail for allegedly throwing a hard cookie at his girlfriend The police were called to the couple's home about 30 miles from Tampa. The woman who has yet to be identified told the police that her boyfriend, 41 year old Wade Smith, threw a cookie at her, hit it in her in the head, leaving a red mark on her forehead. The boyfriend, Wade Smith, admitted to the incident and was promptly taken. I mean, that's, that's all there is to it. You just winged a cookie at her and went to jail. <laughs> what, what kind, what kind of cookie was it, Brad? Uh, it, it had to have been a hard cookie. That's that's all we really identified it with. We had, we reached out to Nabisco before the show, and we've yet to hear comment. Well, no, I was just wondering, like, did they specify like an oatmeal raisin, like maybe a chocolate chip? Like I said, the, Nabo the, the Nabisco people have not gotten back to me yet. Uh, I tried to do some due diligence on this one, but unfortunately, uh, I think they're they're worried about the pending litigation, so they're um, hiding behind their lawyers. Really, is what it comes down to. You know what? You have more experience in this, and you should be ashamed of yourself. You get back to that damn tree and shake down those freaking elves and get me that information. <laughs> I mean, it's a police blog, but and there's the picture of the guy with tattoos all over his freaking face is more than the article is. But Wade Smith from Pasco County Sheriff's Office, you, sir, are a legend because you went to jail for throwing a fucking cookie. So what are you in for? <laughs> and yes, people, those conversations do happen in jail. <laughs> What'd you do? And it, it, it does lead to the hierarchy of where you belong. I, I just kind of had to wonder where this guy adds up into the into the mix because he has face tattoos, which puts him pretty goddamn high on the hierarchy. But he's also in jail for throwing a cookie at someone. <laughs> I'm going to guess, and just me painting like my own subjective reality here. I'm assuming that, you know, guy was frustrated with girl for some reason because he had stale cookies. 
She left the which bag is why open. They, she left the bag which, open. Which is, yes. <laughs> and then he went to go enjoy his chewy chips ahoy. Which again is me, you know, being very assumptive. But again, in order for the purposes of this alternate reality, I'm going to have to create my own little details here. So he went to go open his chewy chips ahoy and enjoy one. But nay. Nay. <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't so chewy anymore. <laughs> they were not chewy. In fact, they were the opposite of chewy. They were unchewy. I.E. hard. So... They went from being a pastry to a projectile, and he just followed the natural progression of things, and she resulted in collateral damage. So would you say she had it coming? Would you no. Would you be willing to go that there's, far? No. There's plenty of squirrels out there that would have enjoyed those cookies, hard or not. You know, I, I've, I heard a story one time about my uncle, who uh, a couple of my aunts refused to eat cookies that were broken. So when the cookies would come home from the store, my uncle would, uh, you know, scamper his little self into the kitchen and proceed to break every single cookie. <laughs> so that is genius. <laughs> so none of his <laughs> sisters would eat them and he'd get them all to himself. That is genius. Oh my gosh, that is... <laughs> Diabolical. That's like, that's like, that's like pre-Lex Luthor genius. I wouldn't say I call it genius, but I would call it fucking dirty. <laughs> Truth. That's like pre-label the car- uh, pre-Larry the Cable Guy genius. I'm not sure I get that reference, but okay. What 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 does label the car- Larry the Cable Guy have to do with this? Absolutely nothing. Oh, you're disgusting. So now that we're we've gone done with our little Florida story, we're gonna go all the way back across the country to Oregon, where a man sues, alleging he went to the doctor for distress over marital woes, only to find the physician was having an affair with his wife. What are the freaking odds? I mean, seriously. I just call that excellent diagnostic skills. <sighs> A Ben man was experiencing depression as a result of his failing marriage, so he went to his family physician, who counseled him on ways to improve his marriage, and prescribed him marijuana and CBD. The patient now claims in a lawsuit that all along, the doctor, Ronald Rosen, was having an affair with his wife. In a complaint filed Monday at the county court, local musician and financial advisor Pearson Tone, how is that a name for a musician, by the way? Pearson Tone. We're just going to continue moving along with that. I'm just. I'm, you got nothing. I'm going to. Re- I'm going to. Re- that has absolute. I am very kerfluffable by that. By that name. That is just. That. Forget it. Fuck it. It's stupid. What a stupid name. Well, that's it. Pearson Tone is seeking two point mi- two point nine million dollars from Rosen for professional negligence. As a result of his conduct, plaintiffs uh, sustained emotional distress, including the loss of his marriage and emotional and social destruction of his family, the lawsuit states. Rosen did not return messages left at his office. From 2015 to 2018, Tone and his wife and the two children received medical care at Rosen's clinic. Open Paths Integrative Medicine, according to the suit. At some point, the suit says Rosen began having a relationship with Tone's wife. In November of 2018, Tone went to Rosen to treat his depression, which was caused by the stress in his relationship, the lawsuit states. Rosen counseled Tone and offered him solutions to enhance and heal his marriage and prescribed him herbs and breathing techniques for his depression, including marijuana and CBD. After the visit, Tone learned Rosen had been involved with his wife for an extended period of time, the complaint states, uh, and the couple later divorced. Rosen has been licensed to practice medicine in Oregon since 1991, according to the Oregon Medical Board. He has no prior cases of medical malpractice. Well, can't say that anymore. (laughs) Now, what part of integrative medicine didn't you understand? (laughs) Well, he certainly integrated something into it. That's what I'm saying, buddy. You know? Wow. Wow. 
In addition to traditional wow. medicine, Rosen offers patients a range of holistic alternatives, according to his website. He's trained to perform acupuncture, uh, osteopathic me- uh, manipulation, and biodynamic cranial osthopper. I can't pronounce this crap. Uh, he is also a certified laughter yoga leader. Let me let me read that again. He is also a certified laughter yoga leader. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would ne- I would never ever 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 seek medical advice with somebody using that as a credential on their door sign as well. If, I just wouldn't. If, if you tell me that oh, I'm a, I'm a licensed physician. I'm also a certified laughter yoga leader. <laughs> I'm gone like a freaking fart in the wind, dude. There is no way I'm letting this guy treat me for a cold. Telling you what, I would be disappointed if I walked into that man's lobby and did not see a, an entire like curio cabinet of snake oil. <laughs> like, <laughs> like laughter yoga. Okay. So how does that work? All right. Okay, we're gonna went into down dog. <laughs> Maybe you laugh through the pain. Or you laugh through the shame. You laugh through the shame of putting that on your business card. I don't know. (laughs) Okay, everyone, just so you know, this is on my actual business card. Laugh at me while you play along. Let's go. I bet you that shit doesn't even have a watermark on it. Like, what the hell? It's not even embossed. He got that stuff from, like, Vistaprint. I'll tell you what. I had legit business cards. When I work for Peru. Sit around and oh, like, yeah. uh, yeah, and like trade business cards and see who's got the better one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I was like, I work for a trillion dollar company, bro. Look at this business card. Raise lettering, watermark, holographic seal. What the hell do you bring to the table? Comic Sans? <laughs> no. <laughs> Get out of here with Comic Sans. Uh, no, 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 no. I, no. I wouldn't come to you for advice on how to finance a warm cup of coffee with that card, buddy. Get out of here. <laughs> you know, I got my business cards at work like the second week I was there. And they put the wrong extension on there for my office phone. And they put my cell phone on there, which I told them not to do. I still have a box of brand new business cards in the bottom of my desks. I refuse to hand those things out. <laughs> Why would I give anybody my cell phone number? In all seriousness, I deal with people that are mad. I'm not giving them my cell phone number. Call my office number. I'll call you. But even then, they couldn't even call my office number because they, they put the wrong damn extension on it. Yeah. It's like, do you know how many times I had to re-record this voicemail message and now nobody's going to be able to hear it? Get out of here. <laughs> Somebody better unfuck this now. You know, I wish it wouldn't be completely unprofessional for me to tell you about some of the calls I do receive because I got some doozies in the last week. Let's be, let me tell you. But I'm a professional, and I'm not going to go there. Well, let's talk about therapy some more. Well, there's maybe, not... <laughs> maybe, you know, like, a little bit of laughter yoga. Well, Tone, like, we 47, pop- who goes yeah. by his middle name, Franchot, Franchot, has experienced success in this... Uh, <laughs> disparate field of music and finance as a songwriter who ran his own studio in Los Angeles and is a financial advisor for the local Merrill Lynch office. <laughs> oh shit, that's no bowl. He is the oh god. What? He is the grandson of classic Hollywood star who also named Franchotone. <laughs> Wow, that's a very melodic family. Uh, Tone's attorney, uh, James Hughley. I shit you not, James D. Hughley <laughs> declined to comment. <laughs> hmm. Out of all the people that this guy went... He, I'm going to go to this doctor and get help. Oh, that's the one that's fucking my wife. Okay, cool. I mean, how? And, and I mean, he's going to get this guy dead to rights. I mean, he, he by it's medical malpractice through and through, but... <laughs> man the guy the guy refused to comment sounds to me like he's tone deaf <laughs> well 
well, you've you've now set a record there, Buck. Yeah, we're going to start wearing that button out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go to our main event of the evening, shall we? A woman's viral tweet about asking a contractor for a quote after midnight sparks debate on Twitter. I know it doesn't sound like something, but I think it is. <laughs> there are just some things you do not do. One of those is sending professional messages after standard business hours. People are winding down and thinking about, I don't know, things to don't stress them out. One woman is going viral about a customer service exchange she had. Ivandra, that's her name, Ivandra, is CEO of EMC Cosmetics and is also an interior architectural designer. Recently, she reached out to someone via text for a carpet quote, and it was past midnight. The person responded with the, with the quote, as well as a very good question. So she actually, and it, there, there's a picture here of the, uh, of the text exchange where at 12.15 a.m., she writes, Hi, can I have a quote, please? And she spells please, P-L-S. That's, that's just... But the response, Red flag. response is, yes, here's a quote. Who the fuck asked for carpet at 12.15 a.m.? <laughs> She literally texted this guy's cell phone at quarter after midnight. <laughs> so here's the question of the day, Buck. If you have a business and for some reason you get a text from a client asking for a quote at, you know, quarter after midnight, what's the appropriate response? Honestly, the uh, since I used to have, like, experience with this kind of, Stuff, you know, because I had clients that would text me at 12, 15 at night all the time. I do whatever the hell they ask. If I'm up and I take the text, I'm like, yep. Because, I mean, like, when you're a businessman, like, you keep what you kill. But I got to tell you what, you know, so, you know, as far as, like, the appropriate response goes, I, I don't I don't know what the appropriate response goes w would be. But I'll tell you what, I like this guy's, you know, <laughs> panache. Like, he obviously doesn't, he's not hurting for carpet clients. Like, and that's, you know, if, uh, if, if you're, uh, if you're able to pick and choose who your clientele are, then that would be the appropriate response. I mean, like, you have business hours for a reason. Well, you know? even then, if you were able to get your cell phone, someone that you're a contractor, you could have handed on their cell phone number. You don't abuse it. I mean, that's kind of. I don't even. Want, I don't want your personal texts at twelve fifteen in the morning, let alone your business text. I mean, god damn. Uh, well, the tweet went viral, receiving one hundred seventy two point one thousand likes, and a eleven point four thousand retweets, and a whole lot of commentary on the situation. Many people took the customer service rep side. Uh, one person saying, y'all customers kill me. Don't text me at crazy hours. If it was an email, I'd forgive you, but L-A-M-A-O. <laughs> you can't hit someone up for work uh, anything work-related in the middle of the night. When a professional gives you their number, it goes without saying you can only use it during business hours. But there's also people supporting Avandra. You're within your right to ask for a quote. He could have not replied and waited till 9 a.m. and then given you your quote. I hate it when people try to say that you have a right to something. You don't have a right to shit. You have a right to breathe. That's about it. Uh, she didn't. I mean, <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Like, people have business hours for a reason. You know, so kind of kind of don't have the right to ask for a quote. Especially if there's, like, published and established business hours. Like, guy's a carpet installer. I was a financial advisor. You know, I, I didn't have business hours, so I, 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 I would feel bad. But this guy, he's got business hours. How the fuck does she have a right to get a quote outside of business hours? <laughs> That'd be like, that would be like me, like, standing outside of Target calling the, calling corporate and being like, no, 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 no. I know that your store closes at, at 
10, but it's 10.15 and I have a right to go shopping. Well, it's like those so, assholes that when you're working. Open it up. It's like those assholes when you're working retail that they come in the door and say, what time? It's it's like 10 of 10. What time do you close? Uh, we close at 10. Oh, good. I'm glad I made it. I want to order. And they <laughs> and, you're, and you end up stuck. Th- th- that's the kind yeah. of asshole we're dealing with here. And I can only imagine this place is called Uncle Carpet because this, this tweet's the best. Uncle Carpet is what everyone who works in customer service wishes they could tell people. And that is the absolute freaking truth. I mean, it really is. I, I One of my favorite things right now on Twitter, or I'm sorry, on uh, YouTube, is called Karen's in the Wild. <laughs> it's just video of these obnoxious bitches. And almost most of them, if not you know, the bulk majority of them, are just these self-entitled bitches complaining about retail stuff. I've worked in retail. I've worked in customer service. You know, thank God it was many, many moons ago. I don't really, I, I, I expect a lot from servers. I got restaurants, uh, but I don't, uh, I don't treat them like shit. <laughs> They're human beings. No, no. Like that. There's no reason for that. They're just, excuse me. I'm going to recant that. There is seldom a reason for that. Like there is the, there is the off instance where, where somebody in in that role really does like screw up and yet, and you got to take them down a peg. There, there really is, but it, it's those, those instances are so few and far between. And, you know, guy messes up your order or, you know, somebody doesn't speak English well enough. Like, but, but, but why, why? Like, Something why I tell my out? something I tell my kids is why why waste the calories on getting angry about it? And here's the thing, folks. If you may not realize this, but if you go back to the store or, or whatever it has, say, hey, um, there was a mistake, and this is what the mistake was. And if you're just like chill about it, typically they're like, oh shit, I'm sorry, and they'll make it up to you. If you go in there saying, you sons of bitches, where's my extra fries? Well, you yeah. might, you might get your fries, but. <laughs> You know, just the other day, I ordered food from Sheets, and you know, Catherine went, or you know, Catherine went and picked it up, and they forgot to put her uh, her beverage on there. They forgot to, they you know, I paid for it, but they didn't give it to her in the order. So she comes back home, and she's like, "Hey, you know, I didn't get this beverage. I, you know, I didn't know it was supposed to be on there. Blah blah, whatever, whatever." I was like, oh, crap, you know, I guess I'm just out or whatever. And she goes, well, you know, we don't have to be, you know, stupid about it. We can just call in and tell them they made a mistake. And I was like, eh, you know, go ahead. So what does is, what is Sheets do? They send us a $10, $10 gift card. Like okay. the Sorry, beverage that I ordered, the, the beverage that I ordered was like $2.89. And they send me a $10 gift card and an apology letter. You know, that I've, they I've, forgot, I've they had forgot situations. I've had situations where I've called like a store and said, "Hey, um, you know, this happened. You 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 left this off of here or whatever." And they'll be like, "Okay, well, where can we send some gift cards?" I go, "I, I no, listen. I don't. I don't need. You know, I don't. I'm not asking for anything. I just want to get this fixed. That's all." And they're like, "Well, I mean, we'd like to send you fifty dollars. I mean, I I didn't ask for that. I'm not going to say don't send it, but I didn't right. ask for that." <laughs> right. You know, Amazon's the same way. Like I love, I love Amazon's customer service. I did until They're recently. Like, well, I'm sure, I'm sure I might not get the luck of uh, the luck that I've had every single other time I've done it. But you know, I've just they've they they've called me up or I've called them up. I've been like, yeah, I didn't get this. It's been it's like three or four days overdue. They're like, oh, we'll just refund you the money. And then I get the item. Because it was just late in the mail, and I'm like, "Oh well, I got the money, or I got the item back." And they were like, "Oh well, enjoy." I'm like, "But do you want my money?" They were like, "No, we refunded you." No, I was I, like, "But I, but I got my thing. I, I want to pay for it." They were like, "Just, get, you know, not really anything we can do about it. We already, re- we already canceled the transaction. If you want to, you can send it back, but." <laughs> yeah. So I had a situation like, with well, Amazon where uh, I ordered a telescope. 
just a cheap telescope because my boys uh, were doing a project. And when it arrived, the, the eyepieces, there was two of them, they were so scratched to hell that you could not see through the telescope. So I looked up the number for Amazon customer service and I called them. It rings two or three times and I hear, hello, thank you for calling Amazon. And I was like, wait, what? It completely threw me, completely threw me that a live person answered the phone. And I told them the situation and said, you know, I, I just need to get a replacement. And they said, um, okay, uh, we'll just, we'll send you one out right away. I'm like, okay, that's great. What should I, are you going to send me a label for the other one? Oh no, you can just throw it away. What? <laughs> and, yeah. And, and then like recently, just, just recently, I had a third party vendor who I bought something off of. Amazon. They were um, like a knockoff AirPod and they don't stay connected. So I hit Amazon up uh, and said, you know, I want to get a refund on these or actually I asked for a replacement and the vendor was just completely flighty as hell. And I finally said, listen, dude, I mean, are you sending me a label? Are you sending me a refund? Are you sending me new items? What are you doing? And I made sure that Amazon was on the on the thread. And um, I'll just send you a refund. Amazon re- replies to all of it. Don't worry, we're taking care of that. <laughs> and it was like outstanding. But now whenever you call, you get through a phone tree and it's an offsite, um, you know, foreign call center that you're getting. So, I mean, I'm... I'm not as thrilled anymore, but at the same time, when I've called Amazon, it hasn't been, it's never really a hassle. Do you know what I mean? Right. They, they don't, they don't, they don't bully you. No. You know, it's not, it's not 20 questions like, oh, well, what about it doesn't work? Well, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say it's not functioning properly? So if you turn it on, it turns on and that means it works. No, Amazon doesn't do that. They're like, oh, you say it doesn't work? Well, we'll just send you a new one. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it doesn't work. It's like, well, it doesn't work because when you, yeah, we don't care. We don't care. You said it doesn't work. That's good enough. We don't care. Yeah. There you go. Have another one. But, and you're like, what? But, but, so, but, but the money. And you're but, like, listen, dude, we put a freaking car in space. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Your twenty nine ninety five means nothing to us. <laughs> Exactly. That, and see, the thing is, is that, like, I, I like, I like the fact that they, I don't know if they embrace it, but it really sure seems like they do when shit like that comes about, because you're just like, well, it doesn't work, and you've got like a detailed like flow chart of things that you've done to like troubleshoot it yourself and like justify how it's broken, you know, like you're getting ready to like really like just just complete like you're like the fence lawyer like oj's lawyer you're like okay and then you get on the phone with amazon they're like no we don't give a shit you said it doesn't work it doesn't work (laughs) you're just like you're like well what are we gonna do they're like we already sent you your money (laughs) you're like what (laughs) (laughs) like by the time by the time you're like trying to like wrap your mind around the fact how easy it is you get like a notification on your phone that you got a refund from amazon your bank app and you're just like well, I just wasted so much time of my life preparing for an argument that I don't even need to have. Like, do you at least want to hear my reasons? Like, you know, here's, here's the kicker. Used to be, they, they were so chill. They were like, oh, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> there's, a, there's, like, there's a group on Facebook. There's a lot of videos called Viva La Dirt. And they do they do these like, D, uh, like D&D and video game uh, vi- comedy videos. And there's this one where they do this customer service video where they, it's the exact same thing. The guy brings like this keyboard in and the guy's like, okay, here you go. Here for a new one. And he just looks so depressed. He's like, you really wanted to fight, didn't you? Yeah. Do, do you want to come go out and come back in and we'll fight? <laughs> well, it's, a, it's almost, it's almost like you're, you've got your loins girded for a fight, you know? And then you just go in there and there's just like, well, <laughs> you didn't need to. You didn't need to do all this. We're just gonna go ahead and like. There's no fight. There's no win. There's no medal. Yeah, but, but see, that, but the, the thing like about here. that, the thing, the sad part about that whole situation is, is that's kind of like where we're at with the customer service industry in this country. Is <laughs> it, it's 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 expected that you have to fight for everything, and that they're and that they're going to deny you for everything. It's just. 
the way it is. And, you know, Avandra herself posted on a Twitter uh, a poll to see who was wrong between her and the carpet customer service representative. And she says, nah, let's settle this. Who was wrong? And the, cho the choices were uncles. Here's a quote, <laughs> quote, and it's 12, 15 a.m., babe. And in this particular instance, uh, <laughs> she lost with 59.2 of the votes in favor of it's 12, 15 in the morning, babe. <laughs> so even her own Twitter followers kind of threw her under the bus on that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like, you know what? And she really shot herself in the foot there because I'll tell you what, everybody's a bus mechanic on Front Street. And that's exactly where she put herself by asking for a poll. Well, like, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Apparently, customer service, uh, service of SAS, has been gaining in popularity because there's there's another text exchange <laughs> where not currently working because it's Sunday evening and I'm home with my family, as you probably, uh, as you are, probably whoever, you know, same as you. And they were, sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Absolutely no pressure to respond at this time. And they responded, it's 9 p.m. on a Sunday. Please have some respect. <laughs> And here's another one. Um, it's all mostly crossed out. My partner's horn on his car doesn't work. Do you have any spaces for next week? His car is a Corsa VXR. I hope you are keeping well. <laughs> and his response was, are you taking a piss? It's 7 a.m. Sunday morning. Thanks for getting the whole house up, motherfucker. <laughs> I love the Brits. <laughs> well, and you know, yeah, you know, some some people might even argue. Well, maybe maybe she was a third shifter. You know what? I, you you and I, we were both third shifters. And I'll tell you what: the only thing I enjoyed about that was the fact that Walmart was empty, except for the real dregs of society. I got to see, I got to do some real people watching grocery shopping on third shift. As far as customer service calls and shit like that's concerned. You just got to stay awake a little bit longer and get it done. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but like, ain't nobody selling you, or installing have... carpet on third shift, dude. <laughs> right. Well, no, I'm talking about the, the girl who's placing the inquiry at 1215. Yeah. Like, oh, well, I'm on third shift, so I should be able. No, no, no. His poor planning on your part isn't an emergency on anybody else's. Indeed. You got to wait. Indeed, sir. But it is an emergency when we ask you that you please like, share, subscribe, review, tell a friend, everything you need to do in regards to the Social Liability Podcast. If we're going to be successful, we need your help. Because we can only give away so much funny for free and expect people just to stumble across us. That's just the way it is. We need some help. You need to help us. Consider this our Christmas present. Just give us a share, tell your friend, and, you know, let's get some listens going here, folks. We are 26 freaking episodes into this experiment. That is six months worth of free funny. Free funny, Buck. Free. You can, people, people pay millions of dollars for people to script this kind of humor, and you are getting it for the low, low price of free. We ask you to pay only one thing. Attention. Indeed, it, we do. That being said, thank you for listening this week, and we'll catch you next week for another exciting episode of the Social Liability Podcast. Podcast, podcast, podcast. Have a week, folks.